it looks like Charlie Cox is coming out already ahead of <laughs> ahead of Dismal Minus doing Daredevil Born Again next year. I know this is a long way off what I'm talking about, but let me just get one prediction in before the uh, before the end of this year. And it won't come as any surprise to anyone follows me or my channel, but Dismal Minus' Daredevil will suck. And bless it, Charlie Cox, who I really did respect for what he did with the Netflix Daredevil, is, is literally coming out already with an apologetic, almost like in an interview he did with NME to promote a uh, trees of one, a, a film that he's, he's brought out. So this is nothing to do with Daredevil. But within the interview, obviously because he is so well loved and well renowned for this role, they're asking him in a completely separate, something to do with the interview they, they're conducting. They, this is how much like everyone wants to know and loves and loves it. Um, and the answers he's giving, we're gonna go through them after the scroll, because the answers he's giving him are complete crap. Bonjour. So, right, let's 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 get into it. I'm gonna gonna have to look that excuse me this time round because I am gonna I've got a few I've got a few little bad boys. I'm not gonna do deep dives like I do in my weekly reviews, but this, these are the originals from 1986 for the Born Again storyline, which by the way, they've already done. There's another one. I'm, I, I'm only gonna use these three, because they're, they're and, and we're just, just, gonna, just gonna show you. Just gonna back up what my words with the pictures from the original story. Um. And what a shame it is that, that, that Charlie Cox has said. This has to be a reincarnation. It has to be different. Otherwise, why are we doing it? This is talking about Dismal Minus is Daredevil. But I would say to him that, that that's no excuse. That That's no excuse for not doing more, more of what was already been done. Clearly, they don't want to do the Dark Daredevil. Why not... You, He's kind of saying it, but not. What he's trying to say is, ah, we've done that. Well, do you remember when, and these are just TV shows, they're not superhero TV shows, but they're, they're shows that lasted years and years by developing the characters within a genre that people loved, and you just develop the storylines. It's called drama, yeah? It's called drama. Doesn't matter whether it's superhero or sci-fi, or horror. If you haven't got the drama within there, if, if you don't go to, go, come to know and love those characters, anything you do to them doesn't matter. So you need the core characters, and you set your scene, and that's what people fall in love with. Well, they fell in love with a dark, moody, noir, grounded, I hate using that word, but a grounded take on a superhero um, you know, just a bit more adult, just a bit more oomph to it. And now they come out and, and they say something like that. Well, I would say, what did they do with Friends after their first few series? I know it's a comedy, but you know what I'm getting at. What did they do about CSI? Did they suddenly make that for a, for a younger audience because they'd done two or three series of it? Oh, yeah, yeah, CSI. Imagine Dismal doing that now. <laughs> or Grey's Anatomy. Oh, yeah, you get to see series three and they go... Oh, these storylines in this hospital are about the same people. Um, can we change it to a, a fire station? <laughs> or, or, or no, indeed, or, or a bus stop, if it was Dismal doing it. Yeah, yeah, Let, let's have a story about um, a bus conductor and how he talks to people. And they don't even have to walk, do they? Because they're on a bus. But he can do a load of talking and sitting down, this little bus conductor. For Dismal? No, they don't do it, do they? They don't do it. So then he goes on, Charlie Cox, in this interview, and it is all directed at him, by the way. It's all directed at him, and he says, my opinion is, this character works best when he's geared towards a slightly more mature audience. He admits it. No shit. <laughs> no shit. Dark. Dark. Well, let's, let's have a... We'll have a look in a minute. And... My instinct is that on Disney Disney Plus, sorry, I'm so used to calling Disney Minus, even when I've written down Disney Plus. 
My instinct is that on Disney Plus, it will be dark, but it probably won't be as gory. It never was gory. I know there were scenes, I'm talking about the comics now. I know the series was violent. Gore, I mean, you had a kingpin with smashing the head and all that, but I don't think you'd ask, anyone you asked who watched, and it needed a massive audience, and it received a massive audience for Daredevil on Netflix. I don't think anyone would turn around and say it was gory. Violent, yeah. And I admit that on Dismal Plus, on Dismal Minus, they don't go for that, even though they've got the stars thing now and all that. Okay, all right. All right, let's see. You could still do this character. I mean, they've done Willow as a 16 plus. <laughs> so I would have been all right with Daredevil 16 plus. I mean, what they consider 16 plus is near where we can't. And so, anyway, the interviewer, I mean, the gore probably won't be as gory. Who remembers Kingpin? It from Hawkeye. The difference between that, well, if that's the difference we're going to get with Daredevil, I mean, K Kingpin, and I know they made the excuse about his white uh, fedora and suit was from one of the graphic novels, but I'm here to tell you that that is where the resemblance ends and the cane. It was ridiculous, and it doesn't work. The literal translations of that costume from the cop, a bit like the golden red for Daredevil, that was straight from the cop, it don't work. But they've done enough in the Daredevil series to make that silly red suit with horns work. The little in-joke was, originally, way back when the original comics was, because he was blind, he didn't realise it was red and yellow. He didn't, didn't realise it was as bright as day. That, they realised then that that joke weren't, was wearing out. I think it only lasted a few, a few of the very, very first issues. But they realised that in the series. And Born Again was part of series three, because... They were intelligent enough, Netflix, to pluck all the best things, all the best storylines from these comics, and turn it into something an audience can appreciate in 3D on the telly, in real life, live action. And um, I would say to these people that are disappointed about the lighter tone, because the interviewer's asked him, what, uh, what would you say to the people that are a bit disappointed? Um, I would say to these people, we've done that, Let's take the things that really worked, but can we broaden? So all the stuff from from from, this, uh, from Netflix, they're gonna take that and make it even better. I mean, come on, Charlie. Come on, mate. Yeah, well, for me, I, I'm not falling for it. I'm not falling for it. And and I, I, you know, I'll mention my love, and you can see the statue there, look behind me, and I've got all the comics all the way back. Or well, not all of them, I'm still collecting them actually. Um, but that's part of the hobby. But I'll, I'll go all the way back to the Silver Age, right? So it's a character I love, but Netflix nailed it. N N Netflix nailed it. You know, my spider sense was tingling when they first announced it, like, all those years ago. And I thought, oh, how are they gonna, how are they gonna do this? Oh, I'll tell you what, they did it. They did it. And he's in, he rambles on. Can we appeal to a slightly younger audience without losing what we've learned about what works. It says it all. It says it all. Why not find another Marvel character that can appeal to, like, to, to a younger audience? Why are you taking... Well, I know why, because they can't resist it, can they? They can't resist to ruin something that's already worked, take it and dismal it and ruin it. They can't resist it. They just can't resist it. That's the only reason why they haven't picked another superhero to do, apart from and either leave their devil alone, or wouldn't you think the most savviest business proposition, forget what I think about the storyline, and if, if it's gonna be crap, wouldn't you think the easiest thing to do with all the success, the proven, that it's an objectively successful piece of entertainment for free series, wouldn't you think they would just copy it? They would just do series four. But Charlie Cox has turned around previous. I'm looking down, sorry, because he didn't mention this previously, didn't he? And he said, oh, it ain't going to be a season four. It's going to be season one. And he has said, my feeling based on the title is that it is a new beginning. It is going to be different. It is going to be totally different. It is going to be new stories and new ideas. Well, if it's going to be new stories and new ideas, why are you basing it on this graphic novel? Oh, that's because it's called Born Again, everyone. And aren't we clever? Born Again, get it? 
No, mate. No. What these stories did was take Karen and Matt and the kingpin, he crushed Matt mentally. He's done for. And the idea is that he gets put, he, he, this is the, the ultimate test. That, you know, Frank Miller come back to the comic to write this. The guy who, who had transformed the title a few years previously, they asked back because, and, and it was it an was awesome story for that. Karen is a heroin addict. This is the like. This is the story that they want to apply. This is the one they've chosen, just by the title, because they're that thick. They're that stupid at dismal. Because I'm going to tell you why they're thick. They oh, born again. That would be great, wouldn't it? Because we've taken it from Netflix, and now we're going to make it shit. Yeah, that would be ideal. We'll set the audience up for something new. Okay, that's fine. But this lighter tone. I'll give you three little fun facts. Karen Page is a heroin addict who sells Matt's identity for more heroin. Matt Murdoch is homeless because the kingpin, when when Karen, and sorry for the spoilers, I'll have to put. I'm just thinking now. I'm gonna have to put spoilers on the on the because I'm telling you the plot. Um, just, but just think about this light. The story they've chosen for a lighter tone. She's a rune addict. She grasses up Matt Murdock. Kingpin blows up his apartment. He's homeless and loses his job at the uh, uh, as, as a solicitor because all this time, you know, it's not he. Kingpin man, manages to, uh, to 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 make that happen. Um, and then there's uh, one in one of the in one of the issues, he, he goes to confront Kingpin. You know, he's at rock bottom mentally and all that, and Kingpin beats him up, just just smashes him. Smashes him to bits. <laughs> but <laughs> it uh, let's take what really worked. That's all what really worked in the Netflix show, isn't it? But let's do a lighter tone. <laughs> let's lighten it up. Yeah? Well, that's why I think it's going to be shit. Because take one look at Kingpin and what they and, and how they abuse that character in Hawkeye. And let's take a little let's take a little look at these just these three little beauties. I'm not going to take long, but it's just going to be a couple of minutes. You know, if you're not one that appreciates my deep dives and my weekly comic reviews, don't panic because I'm going to go through more of what Charlie Cox has said relevant to this storyline and show you what we've already seen. By the way. We've already seen a lot of this in series three of the Netflix Daredevil, which is another question mark. But they just can't resist it, can they? Someone somewhere has chosen, has just picked out a graphic novel that did that sold well. And wouldn't that be fun? But that's what they do at Dismal. Wouldn't it be good if dot dot dot? And that's how they write the stories round the table. Wouldn't it be good if dot dot dot? Yeah, and then someone else thinks of a scene. There's no story. Someone else thinks of a scene. Anyway, let's have a look and I'll show you. All right, so let's, let's just go through a quick flick through like the original source material. Now, issue 226 um, was kind of considered a little, like I mentioned previously, between it was like almost like the issue before the story uh, kicked off completely. But bear with me. Old Gladiator, do you remember him from um, the Netflix TV series? Now, they obviously didn't make him um, such a um, over-the-top kind of comic book uh, villain for, for Daredevil. But he's part of the um, old Melvin. He's, he's part of the um, Born Again storyline. Obviously, Foggy, how he was depicted in the in, in the comics, and this is like Daredevil getting over the, his battles from last issue, and you know this was just this was just it was almost like the handover from Denny O'Neill, who was writing it, and he's a very well renowned character that you know he was part of modernising Batman back in the uh, late sixties, early seventies, and he's right he's been writing Daredevil, and they're handing it over to Frank Miller again for a little while. Um, you know, look at some of the even the. the the, the inner monologue of, of old Melvin of the Gallia. The room smells awful, and he's seen three cockroaches and a water bug the size of a walnut. 
but Melvin Potter is safe here, safe from Daredevil and the police, and this is where the men told him to go. He'll stay here, right here, until midnight, when he don't have to think about that. It's all worked out, etc., etc. Um, they kidnapped his wife, and you know they're forcing Melvin to to get a million dollars. Otherwise, they'll you know do things to Betsy. Um, and obviously, they changed that for the for the for, for the series, and it really did work. It really did work well. But what I mean is, how that nice. This is just nice. And it's David Mazzuccelli on the artwork. Um, who, who did Batman Year One and you know he, he gets he gets this stick you know look he's gone to his office he's thrown out he's thrown his sight through the window look so this is this is the the, the precursor to, to Born Again and I know we've, we've kind of seen it all before look and then the, the end of the story and it is a little filler issue he has a fight with, with Gladiator and finds out about his wife Look, just all the nice stuff that we come to know and love. Look, whew, whew, whew. lovely. And then he finds out, and then he teams up with Melvin. You know, we, we got a bit of that in um, series three, I think. Anyway, but we got a bit of that in the Netflix show. This is what I mean about some of this born again. He's done already. You know, he teams up to rescue his wife. Um, you know, because he doesn't kill this bloke and daredevil. You know, he's got his eye on. You know wants to see him redeemed and, and, and all the rest of it so so that's kind of like then but look we just jump ahead look it's very of the moment very topical pariah set at christmas time um now the setup of born again is that daredevil's on the streets he's destitute kingpin has blown up his apartment now you don't get much darker than this do you <laughs> he's laying in the gutter and now these are all echoes of his past of his origin yeah it's just echoes of his origin and now we we're introduced to his mum which has already been done hello hello dismal now you don't get like i say you don't get much darker than this but i'm just trying to show you look and then we see him um you know properly it's revealed you know it's christmas time and he's on the, he's on the streets we've already been in we've, we've already been given um Karen Page's backstory, Frank Miller and David Mazzuccelli. I mean, this was this is great in a graphic novel, by the way, if you get it. Um, it is just a great storyline. You will recognise, even before, get it before Dismal, um, ruin it. Get it before they ruin it. Um, now, the other thing is, Ben Urich. Now, he was a, a white, didn't matter to me that he was a, he was a black a actor in, in the Netflix, it didn't bother me one hour. He, he, na he nailed the character. The actor in the Netflix show, but this is Ben Urich in the comics, right? So I've got no problem with with all the usual, all that usual crap. Um, and this guy um, is one of Kingpin's. Um, he's a, he's a cop, but he's obviously on the payroll uh, of the Kingpin. And Ben Urich's on the trail of the story, so he's getting up. He's a, he's becoming a thorn in Kingpin's side as well. Here's Karen Page. Now I don't know how Dismal think they're going to accomplish this heroin addict. Um, in a in a, a as Charlie Cox has said, I mean I don't know if he's read the comics. But he's admitting that he hasn't read the script, but I don't know if he's read the graphic novel or not. But Karen Page is, is a is a washed up heroin addict. He's a homeless reject. Ben Urich's on the trail and he's trying to coax out the, the, the true story. You know, you've got, this is one of Kingpin's, um, you know, assassins, which we kind of see a little bit of that with Bullseye, didn't we, in the hospital and all that. Now, this is Cameron Page being kind of, she's prosti kind of prostituting. I don't want to make this too like R-rated, but this is the content I'm talking about. She's prostituting herself for drugs. Now we've got King Pinsler. <laughs> um, ben Urich, look, he goes back to Fogwell. You know, it's, this is what this is the tone of it. He's back at the gym where his dad trained and where he, you know, the origins of. We're back with his mum, look. Poor old Karen. Um, lovely. Now, this is what. This is what's already been done. But what a way to intro. Um, this was the first issue we even, you know, we know about all this. Um, but he's going right back to the core. This is what Born Again does. This is what it's about. But not only has it been done, and but 
how much is it going to resonate? How much will this, this story resonate if he doesn't have to go through the ringer? You know, he can't just quip. He can't just quip his way back. This is um, obviously another one of Kingpin's, uh, you know, like when they dressed up um, Bullseye as Daredevil, that riffed off of this storyline. And they did it so well, they didn't have to retell this story completely. I think they riffed off it enough in uh, in the Netflix series to to get it across that it didn't go as grim as, you know, I don't think I wanted to see the Karen Page um in the Netflix show become a heroin addict and I don't think where you've got to tell the story so quick I don't think the, the descent in real life into heroin addiction um, happens like quite as quickly as they kind of done in the in the comics um, so you know in, in, here's Ben again on the track like I say I'm, I'm not doing a deep dive into it she's she's still about um, and she turns up at Ben Urich's apartment. That's his wife. So now they want a Ben Urich. So it's just a nicely done, you know, a dark, a, a, as you expect from Frank Miller, that she's, he just gets there in time. Um, it's just a dark, um, here's Matt Murdock to save the day. You know, it's all coming to a head. It's all coming to a head. Um, and it's just it's just nicely done, you know. He saved the, you know, he's on his redemption arc now. You know, he's foiling Kingpin again. Um, you know, he's back, man. Poor old Karen. And all I'll do is fast forward to look here. She is look driving the porcelain bus, as they say in my neck of the woods where I come from in the UK. Um, the the doppelganger turns up um, to to do him in, but obviously. It, you know, it's the story, all the elements of the story just just come together um, to bring Karen and Matt. You know, all the action we 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 like. You know, it's nice to see this. This was nice. Um, there you go. Another guy with a gun. Um, and the the bit I want to get to really is this heroin syringe. And then the epilogue is um, Ben's reporting, reportage done in this kind of font. So that's this is my little epilogue um, after that their their epilogue. Just a little side note: there were two issues after that. That is kind of like even that it was. It kind of wasn't. This story was designed, was written back in a day before. The format of the graphic novel was fully, you know, graphic novels coming out, don't get me wrong, this is 1986. So graphic novels were coming along, but it wasn't like comics now, and there's no, I'm not against it, by the way, but they weren't formatted to be collected. So now you find that six or 10 or 12 issues are collect, storylines are done across a certain amount of issues. Whereas this was kind of before those times, so you've got issue 22 to 26, which I say was that filler episode between the last adventure and setting Matt up for his trial with Kingpin and being, ex you know, his identity being exposed and all that. And then the two issues after that, 232 and 233, you had the main storyline, um, is where kind of Matt and Karen are kind of trying to pick themselves up a bit. I think they live together. I, I didn't have a reread of them other two issues. I'm only just doing this now for Top Mead in the epilogue. I'm sure they found an apartment together. Not like that, though. We don't go there. <laughs> um, oh, they did go there, didn't they? Netflix, kind of. Um, anyway, I'm going to end it there. That's why I'm backing up my prediction that Dismal, and I know it doesn't make me um, a really, really intelligent predictor of TV content when I say that Dismal Minus are going to be are going to deliver a really, really crap. Daredevil. I, I, I know I'm, I'm not asking anyone to consider me prescient in that uh, prediction. But what I wanted to show anyone that w was bothered, the how clearly they're just ignoring the source material and how they're going to do that source material, if indeed they, they're even bothered looking at it. Because we are talking about dismal.
So I know I'm probably barking up the properly wrong tree here, but just look at the source material and, and, and think like, of all the stories that even Daredevil has been in, you choose the one, probably one of the darkest to present a lighter Daredevil as Charlie Cox. But Charlie Cox, I think we all know now, is coming out early doors ahead of the game here. Because I think as soon as we start seeing the plot leaks and, and seeing pictures and all the rest of it, and Dismal start getting on their hobby horse, you know, promoting it eight months in advance, um, and the trailer drops. Uh, good times ahead next year. Anyway, I'll leave it there and bid you all adios.